scientists concerned about this new variant of COVID-19 that could be more infectious and possibly resistant to vaccines. While the Lambda variant has spread to almost about 30 countries or so, the mutation hasn't yet been detected here in South Africa. What does this mean for us? Let's get more on this. Bring in the National Institute for Communicable Diseases Acting Director. That's Professor Adrian Puran. Prof, always great to see you. Thanks very much indeed for making time. Uh, the concern originates in Peru, as far as I'm concerned. That's where Lambda was found. And Peru is quite a concern for us because my understanding is that they have the highest deaths per capita. Is it because of Lambda? Well, I think that that's difficult to demonstrate at this, at this time. I think it's very important to know, you know what's actually happened in Peru um, before I think we make those types of, of associations. I'm sure there, there are probably many studies that are ongoing. I think what is critical, you're quite right, is again to be able to be monitoring um, not only um, what is happening with regard to the association with severe disease and, and outcomes such as death, but also to be monitoring within the, the country as well. As you know, we've been doing that. Um, there's a network of laboratories within South Africa, both public and private um, laboratories that are constantly monitoring and testing those individuals who present for testing to determine what is the, the current um, variants that, that are in, in circulation. This particular uh, variant, the Lambda variant, um, that, uh, that was originally described in Peru, certainly has particular mutations which are, and that's why there is this concern, um, is the use of those particular changes that have, uh, in the genetic material have given rise to proteins that are somewhat different and possibly allow for um, escape mutation. But as far as I can see, there are one or two publications that have shown that, in fact, this may not be um, the, the case, that, in fact, for example, the mRNA vaccine, such as the Pfizer vaccine, um, should still uh, be effective. Right. So two important things to say unequivocally at this stage. One, we can't say beyond reasonable doubt that Lambda causes severe disease. And two, we don't even sure if it's driving the death rate that we're seeing in Peru. Am I understanding you correctly? That's my sense from what I, I can see from the, the literature. So I think we just need to be cautious around that. I mean, we've seen um, severe outcomes in different countries and it's not necessarily because of the, the nature of the, the virus, but it could be partly associated with the, the nature of the virus, but also because of the, the high numbers, the health system, all these particular factors um, need to be taken into account to really understand why we are seeing you know, specific outcomes such as high mortality rates. We're seeing Lambda nonetheless in 27 countries from the information at my disposal. Obvious questions that will follow from that is, should South Africa be considering closing its borders? It's the same discussion that took place with Delta when the India moment was uh, unfolding. Has that horse already bolted? It's in 27 countries. Will closing the borders make a difference? My sense, again, is that, you know, it's very difficult to control because, again, you, you may well control, you may well be in a bubble, um, but that does not mean that the virus will still not gain access. And we've seen this in Australia, for example, um, and New Zealand, where they had these uh, tight bubbles, but yet um, we're now seeing Delta, I think, in Australia, for example. So I think much as one would like to control one's borders, I think it's going to be very difficult. I think once it's within a country, I think what is therefore critical is really to try and keep track and um, from that tracking is obviously the quarantine or isolation of those individuals that are, are in contact. I think that was, they've certainly tried to do in the UK as well, is once the, for example, the variant from South Africa was identified, it's tried to do you know, community level um, lockdowns, if you like, to really try and ensure that they can do a good trace and, and, and track. How effective that has been, I think, is um, certainly um, a clear, whereas, for example, the Delta variant, they were really we're not really able to control that at, at all. In fact, as you know, the numbers are certainly shot up, um, and we'll see what the, the outcome is, especially if they lift the uh, restrictions that they have in the UK. Right. Let's speak a bit more then about the epidemic here at home. Once again, Delta, we're told, driving the surge in numbers. We've been interested in the test positivity rate over the past couple of days on this program. It's showing a slight decrease, now below 30%, still at 26%, though. What do we make of that? Yes, I think, again, I would be cautious. I think what one would really like to look, because there's variability, as you've, you've noted, and that variability can be smoothed out, what is called the seven-day rolling average. So I think we need to keep an eye out on that, because if you start disaggregating that number, 
in terms of the province of Limpopo has a positive, you know, in terms of their numbers of that were tested positive was 42 percent. So again, you know, I think we really need to be cautious around that, whereas I think Kateng as well is probably above 30 percent as well. So I think we just need to be cautious about that whole number and look at a, a rolling uh, average and look at the, the specific provinces. But you're right, I'm hoping that we can certainly see downward um, uh, trends, especially really looking forward to a downward trend um, in Gauteng, because that would mean at least that we've probably reached the peak, but it still means high numbers as we, we come down um, that particular peak. Professor Adrian Puren, always great chatting to you, sir. Thanks very much indeed for speaking to us here on the AM Report. Professor Puren is the Acting Executive Director at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases.